Hey guys, this is Cardinal Bird 5 and I'm here with a, uh, another tutorial video. Today we're going to be talking about pitching tactics. So, I actually have some online gameplay footage for you. Um, one of my uh, first tips is going to be make sure you establish that fastball. I usually like to start off my opponents with a, uh, a high and inside fastball to see if they can catch up with it. If I, if I know the person I'm playing and I know they can hit that fastball, I obviously won't do that, but if you're playing somebody uh, you don't know, I would always challenge them right away, see if they can hit it. Because most of the time, uh, they won't be able to catch up with it, and it's going to take them a while to adjust. So I always try to establish that high fastball. Now, the person I am playing, he uh, he's one of my buddies. He is a pretty good hitter, so <clears throat> he I know he can catch up with it eventually, but just to showcase you guys, I'm going to start off with a high fastball, and he hits a pretty, pretty good pitch right there line drive to center field but it was a line out so let me go to my other tip you guys see on that left left hand side there it shows the contact and timing check that every single time for offline it is going to be a little bit off uh, the PCI placement anyways is going to be off but as far as the timing and contact that's going to be pretty accurate so make sure you guys are looking at that every single every single swing he has make sure you're looking at that see if they're late just late um, I, I, very, I think very late is another one, very early, early. And then of course adjust your your pitching from there. So we see he's late on that fastball. <clears throat> so I can already tell right away he's been late on a fastball and he's been on it. So he's probably up there looking for different pitches and different counts. And this is when online games become fun and the pitching becomes a chess match. But there's going to be a lot of opponents you play online that are going to be very limited when it comes to their ability. So you want to try to find out in the first inning what kind of hitter they are. And that brings me to my third tip. Pick up what type of hitter is he. Um, is he using analog? Is he using uh, zone? It's, it doesn't tell you on the, on the feedback if he's got a stride timing, so it's kind of hard to pick up if he's using analog this year. But usually if they're tracking on everything and they're hitting pitches like low and away or low and inside, that normally zone hitters don't hit, um, there's a good chance he's using analog hitting. Um, there are some zone hitters that can track the ball well too, so uh, those those two types of hitters actually are pretty pretty common, or not pretty common, pretty similar, so you kind of want to pitch them the same. Uh, then you also, of course, you have your center swingers, the ones that don't move their PCI, um, and then you have people that set, set low a lot of the time and you just want to attack them with high stuff. Uh, so. That's, that's going to be one of my big tips. Try to figure out what type of opponent uh, or what type of hitter your opponents are. Hmm. So, moving on here. You see I'm checking the tendencies. Uh, Adam Dunn is an extreme bull hitter, and normally there would be a shift, but there's a runner on. So that's another tip. Check their uh, the spray charts along with the hot cold zones. The spray charts will tell you what kind of hitters they are, uh, as well as their percentage to hit what field. And if they are extreme pull hitters, and they're left-handed hitters, they will, or your team will automatically put a shift onto them. So you want to make sure you pitch into that shift if that is the case. Um, the case here, there was a run on first, so there is not going to be a shift in that in that instance. But if there was no one on, there would be a shift for Adam Dunn, and you want to throw soft inside. It, you know, either sliders, changeups, curveballs inside. If you're not comfortable with doing that because he is a power hitter, um, and then you'll want to just take the shifts off completely. You can also change the shifts to manual if you want in the offline menus. So uh, that's something to keep in mind when you guys are pitching. There will be a few uh, pull pull hitters that are left-handed that your team will automatically shift for. So just make sure you keep that in mind because I notice a lot of people online um, those pull hitters will come up and they'll be throwing them fastballs away, and that makes it super easy, especially online with the people having late swings to uh, hit it opposite field and beat that shift. Uh, same thing goes for offline as well. And probably more, this is probably more applicable for offline. If they have shifts on, pitch into it. And uh, you, they don't do them for right-handed hitters, so you can put them on manually though if you guys feel comfortable doing that. So, And then there is the uh, hot cold zones you see. Usually online I have them off, but you can pitch to them. To me, these don't affect these don't affect very much. They're mainly cosmetic. 
Um, and I know if you're playing Diamond Dynasty, your players develop their own hot cold zone, so they can be helpful in that sense to tell you where, where and what your opponent's, you know, strengths and weaknesses, where they're at. Uh, but for MLB players, it's it's going to be the same for each hitter. It's not going to be based off your uh, <coughs> your opponent's tendencies or anything like that. So you can attack them. Uh, I know they're they're pretty negligible as far as you know impact on hitting. And if you do want to attack them, make sure you don't do it the whole game. Most people will pick up on that, because I've played people that they only attack those cold zones, and they lay off the hot zones. It's uh, not a very good strategy to use online, because people will start to pick that up. You want to find out where their vulnerabilities are as, you know, as a person, as a player. You don't want to just look at the computer's hot cold zones. So I'm just going to bunt, bunt here so I can get back to pitching for you guys. So if you're wondering why I'm doing this, that's why I want to talk about only pitching for this. Um, let's see. Something else to keep in mind here uh, that won't be shown in this game is the warm-up feature. And that is not that's not used for online, but it's an offline tool you can have. And you can turn it on or off. But anyways, when you start the game and you have it on, you can warm up your pitcher. <sighs> and also, when you bring someone in from the bullpen, you can warm them up. I rec highly recommend doing this. Um, this is a big tip for you offline players out there. Uh, make sure you use the uh, warm-up feature because you can get your pitch confidence up. And you see on the right side there, those are the pitch confidence. So if Maxers are warming up and starting the game with those specific pitch confidence levels, uh, you know, I'll be throwing a lot of change-ups and two-seamers to get those pitches confidence levels up so that's another key tip uh, another way to get those pitch confidence levels up would be to attack the bottom of the order um, for instance if you're facing an NL team and the pitchers coming up and you want to start to establish your curveball but the confidence is real low we'll just throw in curveballs for strikes more than likely they won't they won't be able to do anything with it so don't be afraid to uh, utilize <clears throat> Utilize uh, your pitches that are low in confidence so you can get those confidence levels up because confidence is a big key, big, big key for pitching online or offline. Um, there's also overall pitch, pitch, pitcher confidence for, a, uh, for each pitcher. And in franchise mode or offline, um, it usually varies depending on how he's doing in the season. For like online exhibition games, it seems to me that they always start on a uh, default level and it will vary throughout the game. So right now, Scherzer's kind of like, what, what is that, like 50% or so? Because he has gave up, because he has given up a few runs. And uh, a way to get a pitcher's confidence up would be to use mound visits. <clears throat> and I see a lot of people don't use mound visits properly. Uh, there's two reasons you want to use a mound visit. Uh, one, one reason, and most people do get this right, is for when they're warming up a pitcher and they want to get him more time to warm up warm him up more quickly. That's when a mound visit can be utilized. Also, a mound visit can be utilized when your pitcher starts out the game struggling or he's in a jam, utilize that mound visit. It's real simple, you just press up on the D-pad, utilize it. And then you'll see his pitch confidence, overall confidence will go up. Trust me guys, it does, it does have an impact. Um, when your pitch confidence is up, uh, it allows you to have a little bit more control and when your pitch and when your pitch confidence goes down too low, the uh, the yellow bar will eventually disappear, and it's going to be very very hard to locate pitches. So confidence is a is a huge factor for pitching. The tip I have for you guys will be to uh, to go ahead and utilize your off speed pitches slash breaking balls high in the zone. You want to make sure you're throwing these high in the zone because it can help set up your fastball and make the, make your high fastball that much more difficult to hit. If you're just throwing uh, high fastballs and you're only throwing like low changeups or low sliders, um, they're never, you know, they're going to see that slider and they're going to know right away, well, that's not a fastball because, you know, he hasn't been throwing me low fastballs, so I know it's just going to break away. So you want to make sure you're setting up your pitches properly, either that's a low fastball to set up your changeup sliders or high fastball you also want to mix in some high sliders and high curves in there as well because it'll it'll fool them trust me 
So I'm going to go ahead and try to show you guys that. Um, some hitters can hit them, and they can be a little more dangerous to pitch. But in my opinion, these are some of the most effective pitches to use online. Because most people aren't looking for them, and most people are not used to hitting them for a few reasons. When you throw a high breaking ball, um, it will get more velocity, but it will lose a lot a lot of break, so a lot of people will, uh, will swing under it. In this case, I'm using Scherzer, so he has a slider and a curveball. So when I throw a high slider, they might think it's a, a high curveball coming, and they might be wait for it and wait for it and wait for it, and it'll never come. Um, real quick, uh, I showed you that guy. I showed you guys a balk. If you guys do have balks on, make sure you come set. So I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. Uh, anyways, back to the high breaking balls. Yeah, make sure you guys mix them in there because it's gonna. It's, trust me, it's gonna help your high fastball tons and it's going to make it that much more effective um, other than that you guys just want to mix up your pitches best you can figure out which what, what your opponent is weak against um, this is for online or offline so right now I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, how to do the shifts let's see here yep so for Adam Dunn we do have a runner on second but again I'm playing my buddy he knows this I told him so he's not going to steal in this instance, uh, if run on second, you wouldn't want to do that, but we're going to pretend like nobody's on. And then, uh, of course, we got our shift on, so we're going to pitch soft inside to him. And like I said, you guys can easily turn this off, but if you uh, if you do want to use the shifts and you have it on, make sure you pitch into him. That is a key tip, because a lot of people online do not do this, and a lot of people will have late bats online, and, you know, They'll get exposed if they don't do this. Um, you can, like I said before, you can also do your own shifts. It's pretty simple. You just hit up on the D-pad and go to defensive positioning. You just want to make sure you're, uh, you reset it. I'll show you here. Go to positioning. Then we're going to reset the default. All right, so now it's going to automatically uh, shift for each hitter properly. So we got two outs, so they're not going to be holding the run on second anymore. And it's just going back to normal. <clears throat> and guys, that's pretty much going to be, be it for this video. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, if you like the video, please leave a like. Feel free to comment. Uh, again, if you dislike it, dislike it. Don't matter to me. Anyways, guys, this is Carnivore 5 signing out.